When you say, it's lit fam, nothing is actually on fire. Or when you say, cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye, you're not really hoping to die or stick anything in your eye. These expressions, you know, like rock your socks, piece of cake, turn a blind eye, they're called idioms. It's lit fam is actually both slang and an idiom, kinda. But why on earth, ah, there's another one. Do we talk like this? And how did these phrases even come about? I'm Yara, and on this episode of Zoetic, we're gonna be breaking down the flamboyant peacock of modern language, also known as the idiom. Idiom comes from the Greek word idioma. It basically means a phrase that has a unique meaning that's different from what it means literally. They can't be translated word for word. Okay, so unique phrases, right? But why use an idiom though? In a nutshell, ah, did it again, ah. Using idioms makes you sound a lot less awkward and a lot more human. The kind of thing that helps set apart a native speaker from a non-native speaker. It's why I'll say, take what Ashley says with a grain of salt instead of approach what Ashley says with skepticism or get a move on instead of make haste. Wait, is make haste an idiom that the ancients used? And sometimes they'll let you cram more meaning into fewer words. It's like high efficiency language because the mental image depicted by an idiom is sometimes easier and faster to grasp than a dry word casserole. Like, look man, do not act before the proper time and wrongly level all the blame on your coworker just because you're inordinately enraged. Or, look man, don't jump the gun and throw your coworker under the bus just cause you're pissed. Maybe that's an extreme example, but you get the point. More natural, more pithy, and more colorful. Just don't mix up the words. Kill two birds with one stone is not the same as kill one bird with two stones. Kill one bird with two stones. Even as I wrote this script, I couldn't help but sprinkle a few idioms for good measure. And that's what makes idioms so useful. Sometimes they're the only way to express an idea. Is there really a plain language replacement for beating around the bush or in one fell swoop? Or for the life of me, I can't find a nice and punchy replacement for speak of the devil. What an unexpected coincidence that you just arrived. You were just mentioned in our conversation. Hey you, you were the topic of our conversation and now you've unexpectedly arrived. We were just talking about you. What a surprise that you're here. I don't know why I have my hand on my torso. <laughs> it's not just English that has idioms. They exist in virtually every other language and sometimes the translations can be bizarre. Like, Alles hat ein Ende, nur die Wurst hat zwei. Everything has one end, only the sausage has two. AKA, everything eventually comes to an end. To hang noodles on your ears. To tell lies or talk nonsense. Idioms can be so one of a kind that sometimes you can explain an idiom in one language with an idiom from another language. Take this gem. In English we say, he's talking my ear off. Now here it is in a couple other languages. Saram raft! My head has gone. Kafoy to lemme. Don't iron my head. Halsoy dogota. You have more spit than tea. Dimar matka. Don't eat my brain. And actually means you're driving me crazy. Stop talking. And sometimes you get lucky and find an idiom that carries over to another language almost word for word. Take knock on wood. A phrase used to ward off bad luck and express thanks for good fortune. Bezan betachte. Dok al al khashab. Dok madera. It's almost like we all must have faced similar experiences and challenges across different cultures as humans, and we came up with similar phrases to describe them. Does that mean most people thought of touching wood to woo the gods? So where exactly do idioms come from? Well, interestingly, a culture's idioms can often be traced back to its dominant industries or unique history. Let's take England. A lot of British idioms have to do with ships and sailors because of the country's maritime past. After all, the British Empire was built on its navy. So Brits might refer to a drunk person as being three sheets to the wind, a term used to describe the turbulent movement of a ship with too many sails or sheets. When you're new to something, you'll have to learn the ropes, which refers to newly recruited British sailors learning how to hoist different sails. Actually, Britain aside, there are a lot of idioms that have nautical roots, like Show your true colors, high and dry. One more Radiohead song, I understand. Uh, really, look at any industry or topic and you'll be able to draw a parallel between highly specialized phrases and expressions we use today. Bite the bullet and bury the hatchet were military terms. A drop in the bucket and the ends of the earth have biblical roots. Step up to the plate and hit the ground running are sports related. So if you're all at sea, here's the point. 
Idioms are really useful. We use them in everyday language, as does everyone else. They add an extra bit of spice to our speech and make communicating certain ideas way easier and less robotic. And the fact that they can be so similar across continents has got to be reflective of something. I think our shared humanity. And do you guys have any funny idioms? If you do, let us know in the comments. And hey, if you like this show, put your money where your mouth is. Bang, idiom, and subscribe, click, click. Thanks for watching.